Hello friends! Today I bring you the highly anticipated video of me using Posca paint markers. If you saw in my YouTube community tab or if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably have seen me use them in my sketchbook recently and I had so much fun. So I figured I would make a video with them as well so that you guys can see the process. So if you're not already familiar, Posca is a Japanese brand that is particularly known for their acrylic paint markers. I've actually owned these for a while and I would use them kind of sporadically here and there, but I never like fully jumped on the train, so to speak. Of course, if you're familiar with my work, I pretty much always use the thinnest one in white, but in terms of using all of the colors and using them in a full illustration, I didn't really use them very consistently. But as someone who owns a ton of art supplies, I've been trying to make a conscious effort to actually use all of these different supplies that have accumulated over the years. And so when I finally busted out these markers again, I suddenly fell in love with them. And I don't know, I guess there was just some kind of revelation or something just clicked and now I really really love using them. So like the majority of my illustrations, I start out by sketching with my favorite erasable color pencil and I decided to bust out this old mixed media sketchbook that I haven't used in ages. All of the art supplies I'm using in today, like every video, is going to be listed in the description. I've gotten a number of questions about using Posca markers, and while I definitely don't claim to be an expert by any means, I am definitely happy to provide you guys with some tips and advice based on my experience using them so far. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the surface that you're working on. So for those of you who have used these before or pretty much any acrylic paint marker, the thing about using them on paper is that the surface of the paper will begin to pill or become damaged while you're coloring. Paint markers are actually best used on non-porous hard surfaces like primed canvas or wood. Uh, I've seen people use them on glass and plastics and things like that as well. But of course, uh, many people, including myself, like to use them on paper. So my main recommendation is to use a fairly thick, smooth paper. I think a smooth Bristol is probably the ideal paper, but for today's video, I chose this mixed media sketchbook that has a fairly smooth surface and is a heavier weight. I don't remember the weight of it right at this moment, but it's a little bit lighter than a typical watercolor paper. The reason to avoid a paper with texture is that it will likely damage the nib of your marker and I find that textured heavy paper ends up being too absorbent as well. And another reason to be using a heavier weight paper is because while these are technically markers, they actually are dispensing an acrylic paint, which is a wet media. So if you were to use a thin paper, it would likely warp and potentially bleed through to the other side. The next thing to note is that even if you are using a smooth, heavy weight paper, it still may pill anyways, which does happen to me a little bit in these sketchbook pages here. But I am going to provide some advice on how to approach using them on paper anyways. <laughs> so the next thing is you want to be careful to try not overwork the paper. If you can, it's best to try and avoid going over an area more than once. Of course, it does happen sometimes, but it's better if you can try to avoid it as much as possible. Another thing is that if you're trying to achieve a flat, smooth area, when you're coloring, I think it helps to use kind of broad strokes going in one, one direction rather than a kind of back and forth scratching motion. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but basically we're just kind of going back to trying not to overwork the paper and trying to be as gentle as possible. 
And if you do need or want to go over an area more than once, which as you can see, I definitely do throughout this video, uh, be sure that the layer is completely dry because again, we want to try and be as gentle as possible. And I find that there's been times where I try to layer the paint on top of each other and it ends up disturbing and kind of gouging out the paint layer underneath because it was still wet. But thankfully, unlike watercolors, I find that paint markers dry fairly quickly. So I just work on a different area and then come back to it if I want to do a second layer on top of it. If you're extra impatient, you can always use a hair dryer or blow dryer to allow it to dry faster as well. Something that I think would probably work the best but I haven't tried out myself yet is actually using a gesso or primer on the surface of your paper. Because like I mentioned earlier, these paint markers work best on primed wood or canvas. And so if you were to use primer or gesso on the paper, uh, basically what that would do is it would create a barrier be between the paper and your paint marker and it would create a very, very smooth, non-porous surface. And so that's kind of the next thing that I want to try out. I recently have put a layer of gesso on uh, a page in one of my sketchbooks. So I will report back at some point down the road and let you guys know if uh, I find that works even better. By the way, I guess it might be worth noting that I personally have purchased my Posca markers individually because I wanted to be able to pick my color selection and try out different nib sizes. I think it is probably more economic to buy them in sets because I know that the price point of Posca markers is something that people are hesitant about to you know, give them a try. But I would say that for me anyway, I knew that using Posca markers, using paint markers, I would approach the illustrations using them in a limited color palette anyways. And so I wanted to be sure that the colors that I had, the selection that I had would be colors that I would actually use the most because I do find that a lot of the times when I buy sets of anything, there is always a selection of colors that just don't really appeal to me and then they just end up being kind of wasted because I don't end up using them. So for me, I'm willing to pay that little extra to be able to select my colors on my own. Which brings me to my next topic that I get quite a number of questions about is choosing your color palette. So the thing I think with Posca markers that make them so appealing is one, the colors are beautiful and really, really vibrant. And secondly, working with this type of medium, it kind of forces you to use a limited color palette. It also is a medium that is well suited for a more flat graphic illustration style as well. Of course, if you really wanted to, you could buy dozens of colors and use them all at once. And I've also heard people using the paint from the marker with a paintbrush to achieve different effects like gradients or transparencies and things like that. However, for me, if I wanted to create an illustration with an infinite amount of colors and blending options, I would just use gouache or another painting medium that is more suited for those kinds of approaches. For me, I find that using paint markers, it creates a nice challenge to limit my options when it comes to color and yeah, just putting your brain into a different mindset. And so I find that the result ends up being really refreshing compared to my usual work. Not that, of course, I have anything against the work that I typically create with any other medium, but it is, as you're kind of seeing it here, there's something about it that it still feels like my work, but just in a unique light. And I think that is what is so 
appealing for me as an artist uh, is using different mediums and seeing what can happen with your style and your work and what it can look like when you are using a different medium. So going back to color selection, something that I've noticed with Posca paint markers is that as far as I can tell, the color on the lid is actually quite close to what the paint color ends up being. And I find that is really helpful because you can actually look at the lid and know what color you're going to get. When I was purchasing them at the store, I literally held them together in a bundle and just looked at them to see if I found the colors visually appealing with one another. There really was like no science to it. I was just, I kind of went in there and was, you know, in the mindset of, I really like this color, I like this color, I like pastels, but I do want to have a couple darks and whatever. And yeah, there was really no science to it. I just kind of went into it with the mindset of, I want pretty colors. <laughs> but if there is a piece of advice that I can provide, I think that something I do try to keep in mind when I am approaching the illustration is within my limited color palette, I like having both warm and cool colors together as well. I think it's good to have at least one darker shade amongst the color selection so that it can provide some contrast whether it be an actual area that you cover or if it's just the line art. And lastly, just experiment with the colors and don't think too literally. Uh, like, as you can see here, all of the skin tones that I did with these portraits, they're all very exaggerated pinks and peaches and corals, but I think that's what makes them so fun and what makes using paint markers and using these limited color palettes so fun and unique. Also, another piece of advice that I would say about working with pretty much most mediums and is definitely the case with Posca markers as well is that there will definitely be ugly stages. I find that working with paint markers, it really doesn't look very good until you start adding in some line work which by the way, I did all of the line art with Posca paint markers as well. It's the smallest nib that they carry. It's a 0.7 millimeter pin type. And it's actually the size that I pretty much always use for the white highlights in all of my other illustrations. I find it's very opaque and consistently works on pretty much any surface that I've tried. Which reminds me, throughout the Posca marker's life, you will need to give it a good shake and pump the nib every once in a while. I definitely recommend that you pump the nib on a scrap piece of paper, just in case too much paint dispenses at once. It very rarely happens to me, but it's best to be safe than sorry. Wake up this morning Make the mistake of turning on the TV Nothing but bad news Empty ever news Rolling on the screen Oh Walk to the kitchen And make myself a, a cup of coffee Wave at the old man Get in a something tan On his balcony Oh Yeah, we both have been stuck in our apartments for two months Too long, we don't even get along But the world just fell apart Straight out of the blue, so in my mind I whisper ciao and I take myself to Tuscany. Yeah. Then moving on to my second illustration, I decided I wanted to experiment a little bit more and try to give some dimension to our character, mostly in the way that I approach her skin. So trying to follow my own advice of not overworking the paper, I start out by coloring in the shadows first, and then with the main kind of skin color, I decide to leave some areas with the white of the paper exposed to appear as a highlight on the skin. Then for the rest of the illustration, I pretty much approach it in the same way that I did for the previous illustrations, except instead of having 
line art for the hair, I just used one solid color. Wake up this morning Make the mistake of turning on the TV Nothing but bad news Empty ever news Rolling on the screen Oh Walk to the kitchen And make myself a, a cup of coffee Wave at the old man Get in a something tan On his balcony Oh Yeah, we both have been stuck in our apartments for two months Too long, we don't even get along But the world just fell apart Straight out of the blue So in my mind I whisper ciao And I take myself to Tuscany, Italy Riding on a Vespa in a sunflower field Yeah, warm wind blowing And birds are singing in cypress trees Tuscany, Italy Eating carbonara and reading Machiavelli While the world ends That's where I will be Go back to my Pick up the laptop to join a work call I don't think Karen knows that she's wearing her sweatshirt inside out Oh, water on my plants And I, I just might I take a painting Read every book, then I'll learn to cook from videos and line Oh, yeah, we all have been stuck in our apartments for two months too long We don't even get along, but the world just fell apart uh, Straight out of the blue, so in my mind I whisper ciao And I take myself to Tuscany, Italy Riding on a Vespa in a sunflower field, yeah Warm wind blowing and birds are singing in cypress trees Tuscany, Italy Eating carbonara and reading Machiavelli While the world ends, that's where I will be So that pretty much brings us to the end of the video. I hope that I was able to provide some helpful tips for you guys who are either interested in trying out this medium or are struggling with using it. I have been having so much fun creating these very summary illustrations. I think I'll probably draw a few more and then out of my favorite, I think I might potentially make them into a sticker pack. Let me know what you guys think. I've had a couple comments about creating these into stickers, so I really like that idea. We'll see if uh, if it ends up happening. But one little note I wanna say, this little rainbow thing that I made around this girl's head, I originally, yeah, had the idea of a rainbow, but then it sort of looks like Wi-Fi signals. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for your continued support. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.